55 gallon drum of it, walk into that room and just put a grenade in the middle of it. That's what the mess was like. This room, a month ago, was filled to the rafters with those gray shelves, just like that, just packed. It was our warehouse. Now it's nearly empty. All the stuff that you see in it is just sitting here. This could all be moved out in two hours, and it's going to be a sound stage. We're going to make educational videos. So you can walk in here and say, I want to do a thing on <clears throat> adjectives or, you know, some press thing. And we'll help you make a video. A professional, like we have real theater lighting. Like all the, you'll see a lot of lights up there. Mm -hmm. Most of those came from Channel 8. They upgraded to new lighting, the old news set. They gave us the old set. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you should say again, because you've made educational videos. Yeah, before. we've made so it's tons of them. A new adventure, it's just going back. It's like just, that. yeah, it's taking So where it were you doing one. this before, before you we, had this space? We've had uh, two other buildings in town. We were over on Shippers for a while. We were on Patterson for a while. But we were renting. Mm. And we've had bigger buildings than this, but we were renting. And that was the problem, is we got this building donated and said, well, screw it, we're not going to pay $5,000 a month rent when we can't afford that, when we can own our own building. And Flint was kind enough to donate the building to us, so we're making the most of it. Flint? And Flint Group. Um, this used to be Flint Inc. Okay. Um, they're now called Flint Group. Gotcha. Um, but they donated the building a couple years ago, and we've rocked out on it. I mean, we had to do, and we still have to do epic amounts of work to the building, but it's, it's the best thing we've ever had. It's really cool because now we can do permanent stuff. It allows us to do projects that we normally couldn't dream of doing. Um, the whole building is computer controlled. Everything from lighting, heating, cooling, all that's jazz. We couldn't do that if we were renting. So here, there's no rules. We like that. And by being an ink factory, the whole building's explosion proof. This is a good thing for us. This is the recording studio. Um, this is actually Studio A. Um, the control room's in here. It's still getting used to the concept of sliding glass doors inside. Um, but this is where we'll be producing videos, and it'll act as the control room for Studio A and for the soundstage. So okay. when we do big video shoots out there, we've got all that. Um, but it's it's one of the very few pretty rooms. It's nice. It's yes. uh, All that's left to do is the windows. And it was configured completely about a month ago? Yeah. And we're just we're re yeah. retooling it. So, so it, was, it was a functional sound studio before, and it just oh, okay. been, it yeah, broke we it just, down. We just brought it down, and, and we're remodeling. The whole building is in a state of flux. It's really cool. Um, this will be Studio A, and this is for, like, standard recording studio. Like, you can come in with your college band and say, we want to make it out, and, and have all the state-of-the-art stuff, but be able to do it for a fraction of the cost, and learning the process as you go. One of the classes we're going to do in this room is the what it's like to be a rock star, where... You take half a dozen kids that have never met each other, and they come in, they don't have to know, know how to play an instrument, it doesn't matter. We give them a selection of instruments to choose from, and they can pick anything they want from a tuba to a rock guitar to a penny whistle. And they go through every step of making an album. They write music, record it, mix it, master it, all that. They do a real photo shoot, a professional photo shoot. They make a real album cover, and at the end of the class, it culminates in each kid gets 25 CDs of their yeah. album, professionally printed and all that. Right. And they do one show at a venue in town. And they get the whole rock star treatment with the limo and the roadies and all that kind of thing. We have like some members of volunteer to be roadies and it's awesome. <laughs> but they get to see the whole process of what it's really like to be a rock star. Um, back here is the VSL. Studio B is over here, which <laughs> worth a laugh. This is all our audiovisual equipment right now, which is packed in the rafters. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, yeah Mikey did right. most of this, Mikey and the gang. Um, but we have our drum set back there, and this is just all recording equipment. I mean, there's like 50 VCRs in this room. <laughs> so I don't even want to know how much money and gear we have piled up in here right now, but it's... And it's most of this stuff is out, including a fog machine. Oh, we've got three or four smoke machines and <laughs> just giant monitors and speakers and cameras and just stuff. Keyboards, guitars, flutes, clarinets, and, and we're constantly collecting more. I mean, it's, it's complete madness right now. But we're having fun. And that'll be, that's the old art room. That'll be the control room for Studio B for there. Studio B is a mission-specific recording studio. It's being designed as a recording studio for very loud noises. Uh, about 80% of the time it'll be used for drums and percussion, but it'll also be used for a lot of scientific stuff like jet engines, explosions, 
gunfire or whatever else makes a really loud noise. This is the new vehicular sciences lab, which is where we build geek mobiles. Um, if you want to make a radio controlled car or an alternative fueled vehicle or just nuclear unicycle, I mean, whatever you want, this, if it has wheels, this is the room. And it's really cool because we've got rotary donated a beautiful new hoist. We just did the floor, and right now this is just storage. We're just cramming this full of stuff because we have to empty those two rooms to do the floors to epoxy them. Mm -hmm. So it's just, this will be the last room to get done. It'll probably be two or three months before we have this operation. Uh, right now, the only reason that it isn't packed to the gills with stuff is they're about to hang a heater in here. You can see they're cutting out the old heating lines and they're doing all kinds of stuff. But the, the heating company's been going nuts on this. It's really cool. They've been, they've been a huge help, and, which is good because it's cold. <laughs> and there's a lot of other stuff outside. We've got a giant 100,000 watt generator and 20,000 dollar pieces of sewer pipe. And just, there's a million things that I can show you. But basically, it's it's if you could go to Mr. Wizards and hang out. It's, nobody's ever done this before. Nobody's but ever just said, here's millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of equipment, and you can come play with it. And you can learn about it and do what you want. And there's very little rules or structure to it. Did you want to tell them about the cars at all? I think that's a good. I mean, it's, it's a, a completed project. So that's always we, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is nice to be able to have something I can show them. Say, Here, that's what we do. There's, right. There's like 200 projects in this room, and they're all taken apart. Well, just timing is bad. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, your you know, a month and a half ago or two months ago, yeah. all, all of this stuff. Well, he wanted to punch. talk about the whole Astro Lounge ah. thing. So that's how he tracked me down. Okay. Um, but that's the that's basics of who we are and what we do. Gotcha. So, the Astro Lounge. Let's go back up here. Actually, let me ask one more question about this. Sure, you can ask me as well. How did this all start? Where did this come from? In a dorm room in a dumpster. Yeah? Yeah, it started in a dorm room in a dumpster. Um, I used to live out of Grand Valley State University. Years and years and years ago. Um, I'm actually 300 years old. Um, <laughs> and this is me. I, I never set out to want to build a school and change education. That was not my life school. I wanted to play drums and jazz band. That's it, that's all I want to do. I want to be a drummer and jazz band. Got my groove, I'm cool. I'm a white guy, but I got rhythm, so I'm there. And I like building stuff. I like tinkering. I like taking things apart. I like learning how things work. And it's what I did. And I went up to Grand Valley, and I met a couple other guys that liked doing that. And my friends started being people that are other geeks. And we want to take things apart. And we want to build things. And we want to do stuff. We don't want to sit and play video games all day. We don't want to sit and party all day. We want to do things. And pretty soon I had a dozen guys hanging around. And we were living in a dorm room, little tiny two-bedroom thing with 30 computers in it. And, and toolboxes and stuff. And we're every every other day we're in, you know driving around town dumpster diving finding parts, you know it's like oh I can use that for this and I can take these old bicycles for that and I, you know all kinds of shit and it just went insane and it just grew and it grew and we went from a dorm room to a 26,000 square foot warehouse downtown Grand Rapids no heat no running water flaky electricity but we were having a blast and. Then it was, let's make this a serious business. And, and we got lawyers involved and became incorporated and got our 501c3 and started fundraising. And, and that's really when I pretty much took my vow to poverty. And <laughs> I was like, okay, you can go and actually have a real job and make money, or you can live on bagels and ramen noodles and change the world. So, bagels So, when and ramen. did you come down here? Um, I came to Kalamazoo October 15th, 1999. And we came to town. After having the summer of hell, we lost the building, we lost the lab, everything just, we got totally, we, I didn't know anything about business. I didn't go to school for business. I don't know anything. I didn't know what a debit or a credit or any of that was. And we got suckered by a guy who basically robbed us blind. And, which is a recurring theme. It's how we tend to learn things is I'll make some massive stupid mistake that costs us thousands of dollars and okay, well, we don't do that again. And I came to Keizu on October 15th, 99, with $53, and that car way in the back, the blue one. Wait, not the one you saw up front, the one in the back, mm -hmm. and that was it. And since then, everything you see has happened since then. In fact, pretty much everything you see has happened in the past two or three years. And it's just exploding with growth. It's really cool. 
So that's how we got to where we are. Okay. So.